Well, I just want to say thank you because we have made it to our final speaker presentation for the 2017 BWI. You guys have done a fantastic job of listening, paying attention. I hope you walk away with something wonderful and significant from this. For our last uh, speaker presentation, uh, God called Jared Hall to ministry when he was a student in high school in Baytown, Texas. Who knows where Baytown, Texas is? Woohoo! And while in school, he began using illusions, comedy, even mind-blowing stunts to capture the attention of students and share the gospel of Jesus Christ with them. His hope is that you would consider being a part and partnering with him to impact your community in Jesus' name. Please welcome Jared Hall. It might seem crazy what I'm about to say. Sunshine, she's here. You can take a break. I am the moon that could go to space. With the air, like I don't care, baby, by the way. Huh. Because I'm happy. Come along if you feel like a room without a roof. show you watch this come on now put your hands together let me hear you how you doing this morning doing good wonderful wonderful both of you that's great that's great um well, my name is jaredhall.com. It's so good to be here with you guys. And uh, that joke was funnier in 2007, but whatever. Um, this morning we're going to have a blast. I am an illusionist. I have to tell you that before we get going because there's a chance that you will be illusioned. Okay? Um, if that... Okay, I see what kind of crowd we have. If that happens, don't be alarmed. I thought I would start off with my favorite illusion. I call it the bowling ball illusion. I call it that because it is, in fact, an illusion that utilizes an 11-pound bowling ball. Everybody still with me? Hello, everybody still with me? All right, good, 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 good. It's all right to have a bit of fun here. Here's the truth. Um, I like to start off with this because usually there's a bowler or two. Any bowlers in the crowd? Okay, let me rephrase the question. Uh, does anybody sit on the couch and play the Wii bowling? All right, there we go. My people, you showed up. That's good. All right, sweet. Ladies and gentlemen, uh, if you don't bowl, don't worry. Bowling looks a little bit something like this. There's a wooden lane usually. It's real slippery, right? Pins at one end, you take a ball like this, you throw it towards you. Ow, oh my gosh, whoops. Oh, oh, slipped right off, almost broke, almost broke that light. That would not have been good. You have to be careful with bowling balls, especially 11-pounders on big stages like this. Uh, how many guys have been bowling in the last year? Anybody? Two of you. If you're not careful, I mean, you could trip. I think you go flying. I'm messing with you, bro. Sorry to wake you up. Are you all right? Listen, now listen, I would, uh, I would never throw an 11-pound bowling ball into the crowd this early in my set. But... Um, I'm pretty sure if I did, though, this right here, dude, probably wouldn't have caught it, all right? Uh, two hands in front of the face. By the way, if you're wondering how that bowling ball just changed into this balloon, it's going to be a fantastic day for you, all right? Uh, some of you guys are like, Barnum, he's a witch. This is fake, okay? This is fake. I'm an illusionist. I'm not here to deceive you, but uh, hopefully entertain you guys. Do me a favor, though, okay? Um, let this balloon represent your brain, okay? If you sit there try to figure out all this stuff. As I go through it, there's a good chance that your brain will explode. And then stick on your finger. <laughs> She's freaking out. It's a balloon. I'm sorry. It's a, I buy them by the bag full at a place called Walmart. Okay, no cheers for Walmart. We're not in Arkansas. Okay, good, good. <clears throat> hey, listen, it's good to be in Texas. I grew up in Houston, the Houston area in Baytown. And I live in Nashville, Tennessee now, but it's so good to come back. Uh, I've been in Dallas all of uh, about 11 hours. I flew uh, from Scotland to be with you guys. And so, yeah, it's a little bit of a flight, but uh, it's, it's 4.30 in the afternoon, in my opinion. But uh, here's the truth. This, this morning, we have such an opportunity, and I wanted to, uh, I wanted to get everybody in on this. And you guys have heard some incredible, incredible speakers. A lot of information has been flooded with you. So for the next 40 minutes, just sit back, because what you're about to see is ridiculous, okay? This is absolute, this is, okay, I have AD, we've noticed. All right, thanks. I don't go to your work and yell at you, but whatever. All right, here's the truth, though. Where was he? He's, okay, never mind, he's under the pew. Ladies and gentlemen, 
It's called ADD, okay? That's what it's called. It's what, don't put your hand up. That's embarrassing. All right, the community. I got it too. We know. All right, we know. Everybody already knows. All right. That time release Ritalin's worn off. Here's the truth, though. <laughs> attention deficit disorder is what the, if you have it, it stands for attention deficit. Dude, check out all the lights. All right, so it's so good to be here with you guys. This is, this is going good. Um, <laughs> we're going to get everybody warmed up. Everybody hold your arms out in front of you just like this. Wiggle all the fingers you got. Good, good, good. Now wiggle the hands like this. Good, good, perfect. Ladies and gentlemen, uh, put the hands back and forth. There we go. And then point your arms at me. Go like this. Yes, master. Too, <laughs> too soon. We just met. I get it. Arms out, though. Arms out. Thumbs down. Palms out. Thumbs down, palm. One hand over the other. Put one hand right over. Lock the fingers tight. Yep, and then hold it for like a month. All right, thumbs down, thumbs down. Right, even you over the, in the cheap seats back there. All right, good. Wiggle the thumbs. Wiggle the thumbs. Wiggle the thumbs just like this. Now slowly just rotate the thumbs up like that. All right, if you can't do that, then go like this. That'll be the pattern for the rest of the day when I do something somewhat impressive. All right. This morning, I, um, I brought something very special for you guys. This right here is what we call the envelope of mystery. Give me a ooh. Hey, give me a ah. Give me a ooh ah. That was oddly rehearsed. Ladies and gentlemen, inside of the envelope of mystery, I have a prediction, an answer that I wrote in advance. Nothing else is inside the envelope. I'm going to seal this envelope. I'm going to seal this envelope, <laughs> proving. <laughs> okay, it's been a long day. Listen. Proving that this is locked in. My man right here in the black sweatshirt, what's your name? Miles. Awesome, that's my mom's name. Miles, um, <laughs> I'm kidding, bro. Miles, would you come grab the envelope uh, and make sure, verify, Miles. No, no, save it, save it. We have a weak finish. Miles, verify that the envelope is, in fact, sealed. Don't unseal it, Miles. Just verify. Take that back to your seat, Miles. Miles, when you get back to your seat, I want you to put that envelope on the pew and sit right on top. Just put your butt cheeks right on there, just like that. There we go, just... Yeah, just, there we go. All right. You're guarding that with your life, Miles. The reason I'm having you do that is so that nobody can get to this envelope without you knowing. If anybody tries to switch it, add it, do anything crazy, you let me know. Okay, Miles? Good. Awesome. Ladies and gentlemen, I need somebody to help me out here. Somebody who really wants to help me. You want to help me out? You, anybody else? You want to, you want to help me out? What's your name? Right here in the, in the leather, or no, in the blue. Yeah, what's your name with the hoodie? What is it, Jasmine? What is it? Yeah, they think you're cute. Jasmine, come here, come here. Come on up here. Big round of applause for Jasmine, everybody. Come on. If I can get a little bit more track on that, that'd be great. That'd be good. Jasmine, Jasmine, um, we've never met. We didn't prearrange any of this. Jasmine, you stand right here, right over the trap door. Perfect. Now, Jasmine, don't look down. You'll smack your forehead on the lip of that thing as you go through it. Jasmine, we, uh, we're going to perform something very dangerous, if that's okay with you, Jasmine. Is that okay with you? Yeah. Okay, you stay right there, Jasmine. I'll bring <laughs> She's not afraid at all. Jasmine, don't be afraid, okay? You're not going to get hurt that bad. Um, these jokes are going over like pregnant high jumpers. Ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> what? Okay, ladies and gentlemen, ja stand over the door. It doesn't work. Right there. There we go. Jasmine, uh, right there. Don't move. Um, two items, Jasmine. First, I... <laughs> It's not over there. It's right here, Jasmine. This is a lighter. Take the lighter if you would, Jasmine. Show everybody it is a real lighter by lighting the lighter. Just light. Okay, let me hold on to it since you know how to use that. There we go. Second dangerous item, Jasmine, is a piece of tissue paper. Very dangerous tissue paper this is. Uh, Jasmine, if you would, touch the middle of the paper right there. Ah, watch out, Jasmine. I'm, I'm, I'm messing with you, Jasmine. It's, it's paper. All right. She jumped a little bit. That dude right there marked his territory. I'm sorry, buddy. I'm sorry. My bad. All right. <laughs> Clean up. All right. Hold on to the top two corners, Jasmine, just like that. Show it front and back to this wonderful crowd. Perfect. Or side to side, whatever. All right, that's good. You're doing good, Jasmine. It's not easy getting up here doing this crazy stuff. Jasmine, last but certainly not least, I brought a candle that I got at Walmart. Oh, I, now, <laughs> now you're redneck. Okay, good. All right, that's good. Now we're settling in. This is nice. All right. Ladies and gentlemen, sit back as Jasmine and I perform what I call the coolest illusion of the morning. Pump that track. That's good. Pump it.
Take that back to your seat. Show us some love. Big round of applause. You can do. Come on now. All right. You guys having a good time so far? Seven of you. Great. All right. Uh, you guys want to see a few other things I brought with me? Oh, man. I'm glad that, I'm glad that one dude's here. That's good. All right. Well, listen, before I do anything else, i got to clear up one thing. Every time I do an event like this, people always come up to me afterwards. They ask me the same question. They're like, Jared, how in the world do you get so muscular? And uh, <laughs> I'm kidding. Uh, I never get asked that. But anyway, uh, well, sometimes on Tuesdays because that's ladies' night. But anyway, today is Friday. Sit down. These are the jokes. Here's the line. That was over there. We're back over here. Listen. I get asked the same question all the time. It has nothing to do with my physique. It has everything to do with what I do. I'm an illusionist, right? People say, man, how in the world did you get started doing these illusions? So today, I thought I would share with you guys the very first illusion I ever remember seeing. I think I was like seven years old and uh, blew my mind. My dad showed me what I'm about to show you. My dad is not a magician, though. Uh, my dad is a music pastor at a church, which is sort of the same deal as a magician. But this is what I remember him showing me. Seven-year-old, okay? I, I don't know, third grade? What was that? Second or third grade? Anybody? No. Okay, good. <laughs> this is, hello? Okay. I came home from school. I walk in the house, right through the kitchen. As soon as I came in, my dad was like, Jared, because that's what he and my mom named me when I was born. You know, I said, yes, sir. He said, I have an illusion to show you. I said, okay. He said, I have a paper bag. I was like, uh-huh. He said, inside the bag, a bottle of ketchup. We'll place it inside. As soon as the bottle hits the bottom of the bag, that's when it happens. It turns invisible. Ooh, oh. Whatever. Listen, my mind was blown, okay? I was just, all right? So I went to school the next day, found my best friend. I was like, best friend, how in the world did my dad make a ketchup bottle turn invisible in a paper bag? He looked at me. He was like, Jared, you are an idiot. He said he put the bottle in the bag. It's not invisible. It's sitting in there. I was like, genius. So I went home. I said, Dad, show me the ketchup illusion one more time. He said, watch close. Ketchup hits the bottom of the bag. As soon as it does, invisible. I said, Dad, you put it in the bag. It's just sitting in there. He said, oh, yeah? Gone. Yeah, if you didn't figure that out, you got issues. All right, seriously. So, that dude over there is like, he's good. <laughs> He's better than Chris Angel. All right, listen. Is Chris Angel here? That's going to be an awkward show. All right. No offense, Chris Angel. My mind was blown for the second time, though. I went back to school the next day, found my same best friend. I was like, same best friend. How in the world did he turn the bag upside down without it falling out, smacking on the you know, floor, busting, ketchup going everywhere? My best friend was like, <sighs> he said, Jared, he's, he's holding on to the bottom of the bottle through the bag. I was like, you should be in the fifth grade. <laughs> so I went home. I said, Dad, show me the ketchup illusion. He said, watch close. Ketchup hits the bottom of the bag. As soon as it does, <laughs> invisible. <sighs> invisible. <laughs> invisible. <laughs> he didn't do that part. If he would have done that part, I'd have been like, I see dead people. I said, Dad, you're holding on to the bottom of the bottle. It's very simple. He said, all right, I'll take it a step further. I'll crumple up the paper bag. I said, Dad, I can still see the shape of the bottle. He was like, yeah, but is it visible or invisible? I was like, that's a stupid dad joke. Um, he said, I know. Since then, though, I've actually figured out how to make a ketchup bottle full of ketchup inside a paper bag completely disappear. All you have to do is snap. Can everybody snap? Well, it's got to be together on the count of three. Here we go. One, two, three. That's when it, that's when it actually, uh, yeah, you don't believe me? It actually disappears. Come on now. Put your hands together for my dad. Make some noise. Come on now. Oh, yeah. Pump that track up. Pump it up. Wonderful, wonderful. Well, like I said, uh, I was born in the 80s, and I thought, uh, I thought I would share a little secret with you guys. Uh, in the 80s, we had, uh, we had a fidget spinner back then. I don't know if you, if you guys are familiar with the, um, the fidget spinner of the 80s, but this thing kept me up at night. Uh, this right here is a Rubik's Cube. Now, these things, they've kind of come back into style, 
And uh, I have a question for you. Does anybody, does anybody a speed cuber in the room? Can anybody solve the cube? You can, awesome. Anybody else over there? Shh. All right, listen, is that the sixth grade over there? Seventh, where's the sixth? So sixth grade's way back there. Okay, good, good. Don't you move. All right, um, we got a speed cuber over here. We got a speed cuber. What's your fastest time, man? 45 seconds. You know the world record's under five, right? Okay, yeah, you're terrible. Um, no, I'm kidding. I'm, I'm kidding. I, my, my best time is just over that as well. Um, these are difficult. Even a speed cube, most speed cubers, they're fast. If you can break a minute, you're amazing. You're amazing. What's your name? Thomas. Thomas. Awesome. Thomas, uh, you're amazing. Thomas can solve this in under a minute. And what's your fastest time? 24 seconds. <laughs> Never mind, Thomas. You're amazing. I know. 20, sometimes they make it up though. 17.7. Uh, um, I need somebody who cannot solve a Rubik's Cube. Does anybody in the room cannot solve a Rubik's Cube? <clears throat> you can't solve one. You can't solve one. The girl right here on the end of the second row, in the, yeah, what's your name on the first one? Yeah, with the blonde hair, what's your name? Isabel. Isabel? No way, that was my name when I was a little girl. Come here, Isabel, come here. Isabel, you're doing great. Come on up here, Isabel. Isabel, you don't, you don't have to come on stage. Just stand right here for me, right here for me, right here, right here. There we go. Isabel, for this to work, you have to be the same distance from me as I am from you, okay? So don't mess this up. Isabel, uh, you've never solved a Rubik's Cube in your life, okay? I'm going to teach you how to solve a Rubik's Cube, okay? These are called stickers. You just peel them off and put them back. Okay, that's cheating. You can also pop these things apart and just put all the pieces back. If that's what I do sometimes uh, when I get really confused. But Isabel, this isn't a speed cube. This is a cheap, a cheap cube uh, from Walmart. Uh, would you take the cube, Isabel? No, sit down. They're not spot. If you're... They're not sponsoring yet. Okay, so um, Isabel, I want you to study the cube. Study the cube. That's what all the speed cubers do. They look at the cube and they study it. Yes. And now, Isabel, here's the crazy thing. I want you to put it behind your back. And in a moment, I'm going to point to you and say, go, and you're going to mix up that cube, okay? Just give it a few test mixes right now. Just slowly just mix it. You can feel how something you have to have perfectly aligned. Don't go crazy fast. You'll pop, explode. Face me so I can't see it. There we go. Isabel, you got it down? You're just twisting? couple sides. Don't just twist the same side around because that does nothing. You know what I'm saying? That's easy. But in a moment, I'm going to point to you and say, go, you're going to mix it up. When you're done mixing, I'm going to solve it. <laughs> don't. Don't stop. Keep going. No, I'm kidding. Listen, you don't, okay, we'll do something better. That was not impressive. Um, you know what, Isabel? <laughs> we'll race. I have another cube, it's a backup cube. It's also a mix. I'm gonna put it behind my back. I'm gonna mix up my cube. You're gonna mix up your cube. When I say go, are you ready? Go, start to mix up the cube. Ladies and gentlemen, we're gonna mix up our cubes. Now, here's the deal. They say that to, um, even just to solve one side, the chances of our cubes after mixing up is like one in 43 quintillion, okay? Even just solving one side behind our back, one in 43 quintillion. Keep mixing up, keep mixing up. Uh, that is crazy. That number is so big we can't even put that on the screen. Uh, it's too confusing. Also, um, they say that it's a lot easier to uh, solve the cube, uh, one of these Rubik's cubes, if, um, if you're mathematically inclined and um, a teenager. Stop mixing. So tonight, I'm going to solve her cube without being 14 or Asian. It's going to be amazing. So, um, uh, whatever. I'm, I, don't be offended. You know who you are. You ruined the curve for the rest of us. Ladies and gentlemen, this is where it gets good. Isabel, slowly, on my count of three, Pull your cube out from behind your back, and it's going to be 100% solved. One, two, three. Slowly, dramatically, check it out. 100%. So, <laughs> that would have been good, though, right? You were freaking out. You were like, ah! That was, you did mix up that cube very, very well. That is absolutely crazy, um, but you didn't solve it. It's fine. Big round of applause. Isabel, come on now. Put your hands together. Show her some love. She did great. Isabel, have a seat. But here's the crazy thing. Isabel... I want you to see this, Isabel. Those don't match. <laughs> I told you the chances are one in 43 quintillion. I don't know what you were expecting. But those do. If we can get a tight shot right here. This, ladies and gentlemen, is an exact 
match. Exact match. Is that the tightest shot we can get right there? That's, that's it? There we go. All right, let's keep me in health. Okay, there we go. Ladies, that's an exact match. I don't know if you're stunned in silence or just not impressed. Maybe, maybe two sides. Maybe two sides. Would that be? That would be amazing. What about three sides? With three sides? A three side. What about four sides? Would that be crazy? Four. All right, fine. Five sides. Five sides. Would that be amazing? Fine. We'll do all six sides. Isabel, you're absolutely amazing. All six sides. Put your hands together for Isabel, ladies and gentlemen. 100% solved. Wow, like three of you enjoyed that, all right? The other, the rest of you are like, oh my gosh, really? Rubik's Cube magic? Ladies and gentlemen, even if we match all six sides on a Rubik's Cube, uh, some of you are not impressed, but I, I love doing that because there's a great visual to understand. Here's the deal, we're all different, we're all unique, and sometimes we may even appear from the outside to be a little mixed up. And I told Isabel when she pulled that around that they were going to be solved. What she didn't understand was that it was not going to be solved in the traditional sense of all the colors on all the right sides. But our cubes were solved. They actually matched 100% every side, which is mind-blowing to me, apparently not to you. But anyway, it's, it's amazing. But I, I want you guys to be encouraged by that visual, that illustration. Sometimes, I know for myself, when I was in uh, middle school and high school, I didn't look like the cookie cutter model. I, I wasn't the athlete, I wasn't the, 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 the star musician, or I wasn't in the plays. I did card tricks, okay? And I, in high school I played golf. You can't brag about those things, okay? You don't walk down the aisle on Friday with your golf jersey on, okay? You just don't do that. Yeah, I got a putter, yeah. No, you don't, all right? <laughs> but as I get this opportunity to stand in front of you today, sometimes we look at what we have in comparison to what others have, and we don't feel like we're, we're right. We don't feel like what we have is valuable or in the right order. Or maybe what we have or who we are can't be used by God. But listen, God has created each and every one of you guys. He has formed you and molded you and, if you will, mixed you with a plan and a purpose in mind. And I want you to see that this morning because as I begin to learn how to solve a Rubik's Cube, I spent many, many hours. This is What you just saw was seven years of my life, all right? I didn't go to prom because I was working on this, all right? Um, I mean, I didn't go to prom for other reasons, but whatever. Here's the deal. As I began to study the Rubik's Cube and find out how dorky and nerdy this thing actually is, man, that dawned on me one day when, when I could actually figure out how to, how to solve a cube behind my back and make it match. That is crazy. But it gets no respect. It gets no applause. Nobody is ever impressed with that. So for you guys, hopefully to impress you, because that is part of the thing today. I want you to have a good time. I want you to leave here scratching your head. I'm going to attempt to solve this cube behind my back without looking in under 10 seconds. Would that impress you? Yeah. Isabel, check it out. <clears throat> Am I there? Huh, right there, come on now. Isabel, this is for you. Isabel, yeah, come here. This is for you. Big round of applause for Isabel. <laughs> Wonderful, take that home. Hey, Isabel, throw that back up here. Sorry, just toss it up here, I got another show. Okay, all right, perfect. Um, no, I'm kidding. You can take this home, Isabel. Big round of applause. Souvenir. Show her some love one more time. Put your hands together. Come on now. That's pretty good. Oh, yeah. Are we at least having a good time? Uh, question for you. Does anybody have the, uh, the new iPhone? You got the new iPhone? Does anybody? You've got the iPhone. Oh, man, I'm a speed cuber. What's your name? Thomas. I hadn't changed. Good memory. Thomas, do you have a case on your phone? Can you remove the case easily? Yes, pretty easily. Come on up here. Big round of applause for Thomas. <clears throat> Thomas, I got a prize for you for helping out. You did. Uh, you're going to do so great. Thomas, this is an envelope. 
Uh, stand right here for me, Thomas. In a moment, I'm going to have you put your phone inside of the envelope. Now, before you do that, uh, let's, let's do this here. Let's whoop, face ID. Take the phone back. Uh, put it on airplane mode. Okay. Yep, put it on airplane mode. And uh, silence it on the side just to make sure. Perfect. And uh, I'm going to have you slide your phone in there in just a minute, okay? But here's the cool thing. I was at Hobby Lobby, and I found this wooden letter. It's $1.59. It's, it's what these cost. It's really high budget here. Um, but this weighs and feels about like an iPhone inside an envelope, okay? That's, that's my life, going through Hobby Lobby. <laughs> okay. Better than Walmart. But I'm going to have you slide your phone inside the envelope. Hold the bottom so it doesn't fall out of your hands and smack on the floor, and then you cry like the girl did yesterday. But anyway, ladies and gentlemen... We're going to seal up our phone. So, Thomas, seal it up. It's not a peel and stick. There we go. Fold it over. Fold either flap over. It looks like that. Make sure it's sticking. Oh, you got to put the thing through. Put the thing. Hurry before it dries. Hurry. It's, it's dried. No, pull it up. Oh, come on. Hurry. Go, go, go. Pull them up. Thomas, have you ever helped an illusionist before? No. You're not helping one now either. Hurry up. All right, good. <laughs> I'm kidding. Fold it over either way. Is it sticking it's good? It's yes, sticking? It's oh, that good. wouldn't stick when I was licking on this one earlier. But whatever. All right. Ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> Thomas has sealed his brand new iPhone inside the envelope. Thomas, I'm going to give you a choice of one of these envelopes in a moment. You're going to take that envelope back to your seat, open it after the show. The other envelope we're going to make disappear, okay? It's going to be, you don't act like that's going to be, hold on to, we're going to make it more impressive. Thomas, I actually have a few more things back here. Thomas, I have four other envelopes. All these envelopes also contain wooden letters from Hobby Lobby. And uh, so now, the stakes just got a little higher. So I'm going to mix these around, Thomas. You can mix them. Perfect. And uh, these have been... <laughs> mix them up, Thomas. Don't drop them. Your phone is in there. I'm going to have you number these, Thomas, one to six. One to six because we have six envelopes. You're going to number them one to six. Take the marker, and I'll take the envelopes. I'm going to give them one final shuffle just in case you feel like you found your phone. There we go. Now, Thomas, one through six. You understand what I'm saying? One through six. Yes. One, two, three, four, five, or six. Put a big number on it. I'll hold them. You just put a number on there. Ooh, one. Great. Awesome. Perfect. Boring. All right, Thomas, another number. Any number. Going to go in order. All right, good. You can go in any order you want, Thomas. You don't have to go in order. You're going to six. All right, good. Six. <laughs> Christian education. All right. That's good. <laughs> what number are we going with? Four. All right, just right all over me. That's good. All right. And uh, we have two left. We need a five and a three, of course. Three and five is the last one. There we go. So we have, uh, we have laying on the stage, we have five, three, four, uh, what looks to be a six, two, and a one. Yes. Good. I'll take the marker. Now, here's the truth. <laughs> Question. Do you happen to have a small uh, six-sided white dice from a Yahtzee game. No. You don't. Okay, we'll use mine. Uh, what I want you to do is roll this dice on the ground real quick. Roll it right there or over there. Okay. You rolled a one. That's great. I'm going to try to roll something different than a one. Nope. Rolled a, rolled a one. Try some. A four. That's good. Uh, what I'm trying to prove is that this isn't going to roll the same number every time. This is a Yahtzee cup. Okay, check out the cup. No magnets, trap doors, hidden assistants, Spanish-speaking chihuahuas, nothing like that, right? It's just a Yahtzee cup. Nothing in the bottom. We're going to put the dice inside in a moment. You're going to shake the dice. Yes. You're going to yell out the number that's face up, like six or three. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. not, not yet, not yet. Whatever number you roll, whatever number's face up, okay, whatever number, you're going to yell it out. When you yell out that number, I'm going to wave my magic wand. <laughs> over that envelope. Roll the dice. One. Number one. Roll it again. Roll something different than a one. Five. Five. That one definitely sounded different than one, that's for sure. Roll it again. Roll quickly. Three. Three. What? Three. <laughs> hey, you Here, you do this one. I don't. No, no, number, no, 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 number no, no. Number three. Here. Number three. No soft hitting. It just poof. All right, enough. Enough. Enough, you sicko. All right. My turn. <laughs> All right. Take the dice. Roll it again. Roll it again. We cracked that unscratchable scene screen if that was it. Two, two, six, and four. four. 
four. Roll it till you get a two or a six. We'll eliminate number four. We need a, oh man, that one sounded like it this time. I don't, roll it, we need a two or a six. A two, a two. Now that sounds like it. This, all right. <sighs> Ladies and gentlemen, we have one more left. We're gonna, we have eliminated all but one. Let's recap. A moment ago, I said, does anybody have the new phone? You said, I do. You came up here, you sealed your phone in an envelope, did you? You did, yeah. And then you numbered them, we mixed them, you mixed them, then we laid them out, you rolled the dice, you even took the hammer from my hand, smashed that number three. At no point in this did you ever stop and say, hey man, not real sure that this is such a good idea. No, trust you. You just went about this as if I was some sort of wizard, right? Yeah, you are. Which I'm not. So what I'm saying is, if this isn't your phone, it's your fault, okay? Just so we're clear. Ladies and gentlemen, the chances of this being his phone are slim to none. And Slim just got beat with a hammer. <laughs> Truth is, my challenge for you today is to really assess what you treasure, what you value. I've got the, I've got the iPhone. It's amazing. We live by this thing, okay? But here's the deal. Sometimes in life, we take what we treasure the most, we put it in an envelope, and we just roll a dice. And truth be told, that's no way to live, is it? I mean, that's crazy. Nobody, if you really treasure something, especially when you treasure what needs to be treasured, and that is people. And my, my challenge for you this morning is to really think about what you treasure. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, this is his phone. Big round of applause. If it's not his phone, big round of applause. <laughs> Reach inside, pull it out. Could it, would it be? <sighs> it's the phone. Come on now. He did great. High five up here. You did fantastic. You can have a seat. Come on now. Show him some love one more time. Come on now. Oh, man. Well, hey. <clears throat> uh, man, choices. Each and every one of us, we make choices. Our, our days and our lives are made up of choices. And we have the choice to either hone in on what matters, what's going to last, what's going to make it through, or spend our time focusing on things that aren't. And uh, my challenge for you today is to, man, love people. Man, your stories, your experiences, who you are, who you're made up, um, and, and, and who God has made you to be uh, is important. And our lives are like a billboard. I don't know if you guys have ever been driving down the road and you see that Chick-fil-A billboard with the fake cows painting the misspelled words. I can always read those words better than real words, but anyway, you know what I'm talking about. Good. Listen, man, I, sometimes I see that Chick-fil-A sign, I'm like, boom, I'm heading right there. You know, it's like exit 433, three miles on the right, turn left, do a U-turn, bounce over the, yeah, you know what, what I'm saying? Then you're there and you're like, ah, Chick-fil-A. Nobody? All right, whatever. In and out. Okay, so here's the deal. And those billboards, I never miss one of them. And as I drive by those, the other day I was, I was looking at that billboard and I was thinking, man, man, that's what our life is like. Our life should be a billboard to the outside, to the people that we come in contact with, to the, to the lady at Walmart as she's checking me out. Uh, what, what is all this stuff? Why do you have a hammer and envelopes and bowling ball? What is this? Um, man, our life should be a billboard to those people. Your story, you have no idea the amount of people in this world that are hopeless, that need to hear your story, that need to hear what Christ has done in your life. Man, your trials, your tribulations, the things that have been handed to you, the things that you may look at from the outside and go, you know what, that's unfortunate. I, I wish that it wasn't that way. Man, sometimes, man, those things can be the tool or the avenue to speak to people that would never step foot into a church, that would never open a Bible, that would never come to a Bible study, they would never listen to a pastor, but they'll listen to you, whether it's on the field, on the court, in the classroom, at your job, <clears throat> even at home. Each and every one of us, we're so different. We come from different places. I was raised in a godly home, so thankful for that. But some of us aren't, and some of your friends aren't. Some of your cousins, your relatives, your, the people that you do life with, and they need Jesus, and the only way that they're going to find it is through you. The only way that they're going to be encouraged is through you. And our goal for today and yesterday, really, for this whole event is to equip you 
is to give you some helpful nuggets on how to handle situations, how to speak into people's lives with boldness, with truth, and in love. Man, the moments that we're given, we can never get back. And as I get older, man, I started doing this crazy stuff when I was like seven years old. This all began when I was a little kid. And, I mean, I've been doing it now. I'm like, I'm like 21 now, and things are looking really good. Um, yeah, right, whatever. As I get older, okay, I'm standing in front of you guys. I'm 35 years old. I graduated high school about two and a half weeks ago. Things are looking up for me, all right? <sighs> Hello. All right, here's the deal. I don't take what I do serious except when it comes to the gospel. I love having a blast. When I sit next to somebody on the plane and they say, man, where are you heading? What are you doing? I had the conversation yesterday. Man, I'm going to, going to Dallas. I'm speaking to a group of students, and I'm a magician. And they always ask me to do a trick. I always have a trick ready, a little quick magic trick you know, with a dollar bill or something. And, and that's, that is a, an avenue for a conversation to begin. And I have conversation after conversation after conversation with people who are looking for answers, who are empty, who are trying to fill their life with so much junk, but it'll only be filled with Jesus. Whether you've been in church your whole life or maybe this is like the first time you've ever, listen, man, that's what it's all about. It's all about Jesus. We're here to point everything to him. That's why we're on this planet. And if we have any desire, any hope to make a difference in this world, man, he needs to be able to be seen through us, heard through us. If God can use me through this crazy stuff, he can use, he can use anything. And that's my story. Man, I gave my life to Jesus as a middle school student. My life has never been the same. I turned from sin and I began a relationship with Jesus. I said, God, use me. I didn't know that he was going to use my magic, all right, this crazy stuff. But he's put me on platforms. He's put me in front of you guys today. I'm not, I'm not here because I have some higher education and I'm qualified. Listen, I said, God, here I am. Use me. I'm stepping up. And you just have to be willing. And you have to be bold. It's not easy to stand for him. I don't always have a microphone on my face and illusions to hide behind. But when those real conversations come into existence, when those moments begin to happen, man, we need to engage in that opportunity. If we don't, what are we doing? If we pass on that, if we chicken out, if we say, ah, oh, you know what, that's not me. No, listen. I can't tell you how many people I've talked to outside of church in a normal situation that would never come to a place like this. They would have never given their life to Jesus if I wouldn't have had a conversation over a french fries and milkshake. If I wouldn't have looked at the lady across the register at Walmart and explained what I, what I do. Man, I had a lady from Hobby Lobby. She worked at Hobby Lobby, great Christian environment, Christian tunes, playing all day, you know, it's like, la, 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 la. And she's like, what is all this weird, what, why are you buying spray paint and fake letters and what, what? I said, I'm a magician. She said, no way. I said, yeah. She said, do a trick. I was like, <whistles> you know, I can't even do that one, right? She ended up coming to the show, giving her life to Jesus because of a magic show. Every day I'm faced with that reality. God uses the crazy stuff. And sometimes we say, hey, you know what, God, I, I'm not good enough. What I do isn't that. It doesn't fit in that. No, listen, he wants to use each and every one of you. And he's made you, he's created you, and he's given you the talents and interests and blessings and abilities for a reason. But we need to step up to that plate. We need to engage and we need to understand that we're given that opportunity for a reason. We're put in those situations for a reason. We're brought up the way we were for a reason. Man, our story is our story for a reason. Each and every one of us, we're different. Our stories are different. That's my hope and my prayer. That's why I'm here today. I, don't, I love doing illusions. I love doing this crazy stuff. But without Jesus, all this means nothing. We have to live in the moment to really, truly engage. I want to share one last illusion with you guys. It really illustrates that point. <clears throat> this whole thing has been about being able to engage, to lock on, if you will. And I was preparing, I was thinking about, man, what, what do I really want to share? What do I really want to show you guys? As an illusionist, this is it. 
Um, does anybody have uh, the iPhone? I won't borrow the brand new slick iPhone again. Does anybody have another iPhone? I'll use another iPhone so that we know. You've got a five? Okay, that's too old. Um, that thing's barely, that thing's barely alive. Who's got a phone? Anybody, what, do you, what phone do you have? Yeah, you have an iPhone? Oh, I'll use your six. Is that cool? Can I come down here and use your iPhone six? You have your iPhone six? Uh, I'll, I'll use it with the case. That's good. And what's your name? Jacqueline. Jacqueline, you have a lot of notifications here. Also, you have a passcode, so that's good. Jacqueline, we've never met before. Is that right? We didn't prearrange any of this. Is that right? Yeah, stay right there, Jacqueline. Stay right there. You're good. Jacqueline, don't worry. There's no way I can get into your phone because you have a passcode. Jacqueline, where'd you go? You're sitting right here? Okay, good. Jacqueline, we didn't set this up, right? We're not friends on Facebook. You don't follow me on Instagram? You should. All right. Um, I am Jared Hall. We can be friends. If you don't follow me on social media, we don't have a future. All right? So just putting that out there. I'm going to try to crack your passcode. Would that be impressive to you if I could crack your passcode? Would that freak you out a little bit? It freaked me out if I could crack your passcode. I'm going to try to crack your passcode here. Um, let me see. Look right here. Okay, good. Um, I think I've got it. Is it an easy passcode? Is it like 11111? Or one, 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 okay, it's not, it's, it's a difficult passcode. Okay, um, okay, I'm, I'm, let's try this one. I think I got the first number right. Does anybody in the room know her passcode? All of you do. Okay, don't mouth it to me because sometimes people think, oh, somebody else knew it, and they're like, <gasps> they're not doing that. I'm afraid I'm going to lock you out. I don't, I've tried three codes. I think four is the thing. I was, it wasn't one, two, three, four either. I've tried four, three, two, one. What is it? Never mind. Just type it in. Just type it in. Just type it in. It doesn't matter in, if I see it. In front of you? Yeah, in front of me. It doesn't matter if I see okay. it. Oh, one, seven, seven, two. Okay, good. All right, perfect. Uh, I'm kidding. That wasn't it. Uh, but we are in the phone, okay? I, I, we'll do something better than that, okay? We'll do something better. Um, <clears throat> do you have the calculator? I do. Ah, here it is. Uh, I need a random number, one to a thousand. Name it now. Oh man, specific, 894, just like that. Uh -huh. And uh, would you point to anybody uh, in this section over here? Point to anybody at random, somebody at random. Who are you going with? This girl right here, what's your name? <laughs> Melanie, come here real quick. Melanie, have you ever held this phone? You have, okay, but we didn't prearrange this, right? Melanie, do you have a phone yourself? Do you know the last four numbers of your cell phone? Don't say it, but just think of it. You know what it is? You know what? Good, proud of you. Awesome, good. Uh, take the phone. Don't hit clear or equals, but hit the times. Hit multiply times, and then the last four of your cell phone, just the last four numbers of your cell phone number. And now your credit card number. I'm kidding. Okay, good. We're going to leave it like We're going to do one more. Pick somebody over here, somebody you don't know. Pick somebody else. Would you pick them at random? Pick somebody. Yeah, point to anybody. Somebody over here. Where? Who? This guy? Oh, man. What's your name? Wiley, you've been wanting to come up here all day. Wiley, do you have an address where you live, the number? Don't say it, but just think it. Is it three, four numbers? Three numbers. Don't hit clear equals. Take the phone. Take the phone, but hit times and then the three numbers of your address. Just the three numbers and then leave it just like that. And then we're going to do one more number. <clears throat> Let's go somebody way over here. Somebody keep an eye on me. Make sure I don't do anything crazy with the phone. Somebody at random. Philip, where you at, man? Philip. Philip, this is going to be great. Philip, do you have... Um, a pet or an animal at home? Do you, does your grandma or does somebody in, in your family have a cat or a dog? <clears throat> you have a, you don't, do you know of an animal? Do you know how old they are? Just, okay, good. Think of that age. Is it a dog or a cat? It's a dog. Is it more than one? It's, it's one year old? Okay, think of, okay. Um, now let's do something different. You play sports? You know your jersey number? You run track, okay. You know, whoop, I'm going to keep it alive. Do you know the fastest time? No, don't say it. Just think of it. The fastest time. Is it something, is it four flat? Four flat? No, no, don't say it. Don't say it. It's four something, right? Make it up. I don't know, right? Take the phone. Hit times, times, and then that number. Four, whatever. Just, no, just straight. Yep. Boop. Man, that's good. Yeah. Yeah, hit equals. Okay. Look at this big. Memorize that number. I'm kidding. It's seven, 711,101,152. Remember that, okay? You got that? 711,101,152.
Actually, would you help me out? Would you come on stage? Would you come up here on stage? Big round of applause. Big round of applause. And you got the, you got the prediction. Come on stage. And here's your phone. Don't clear this number, but keep the phone alive. You know how to do that. Just touch yeah. the number if it goes dark. Yeah. But don't clear that number. 711,101,152. Okay, good. Come up here, guys. This is crazy. This is amazing. We have some, uh, some tools here. Would you hold on to um, this end of the paper here like that? Would you join me on this side? Hold on to it tight. Hold on. We're going to unroll like a billboard. And you hold on to that side. I'll take the prediction. Hold on to it. Hold it up a little bit higher. I'll put the prediction here. Read that number, one number at a time, really loud. Seven, one, 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 zero, one. Oh my gosh. Huh? Like that? Is that right? I almost ran out of room. Is that right? Let me make it a little easier to read. Okay, 711,101,152. Is that right? Perfect. Big round of applause. She let me use her phone. Very courageous. <clears throat> Live in the moment. My prediction, ladies and gentlemen. <sighs> Live in the moment. All right, not impressed. Okay. Ladies and gentlemen, you're looking at me like, what in the world are you talking about? What is this? Scoot up a little bit, guys, right here. Perfect, just like that. Hold it up a little higher. This number, ladies and gentlemen, we created by multiplying random weird things. I made it up on the spot. We had a phone number. We had a random number. We had a fastest track time. We had a, an address. We got this number. We could never recreate this number. Never, ever, ever. This was made from you and I. Live in the moment. We're not promised tomorrow. We need to seize these moments, these times that we have to be courageous for Christ, to have those conversations, be bold, and engage with those that God has placed around us. This is a visual for that very example and illustration. Seven It's the first number of this crazy long random number. I don't think it's any coincidence that that number is seven. That's exactly how old I was when I got into all this crazy stuff. Nobody's impressed. Okay. Um, seven. It gets better. Ladies and gentlemen, this moment, right here, right now, started when I was seven. But we're actually experiencing this moment together in the 11th month of this year. Not only that, ladies and gentlemen, to be more specific, today is actually the 10th day of the 11th month, and this started when I was seven. But here, it gets better, ladies and gentlemen, because right here, right now, for you guys, I'm going to end out my time at exactly 11.52 a.m. Come on now. You guys are awesome. Thank y'all so much. Live in the moment. God bless you guys. We'll see y'all. <laughs> wow. Well, it's a good thing we ran late or that trick would not have worked. Hey, I want to thank you guys for coming to BWI. We're looking forward to next year. Put it on your calendars, November 8th and 9th, 2018. We're going to be back. We appreciate you guys so much. Hopefully you left with something that you can take away and you can go engage the world for Christ. Love you all. See ya.